the guy that made this bonsai, probably more than one guy actually, but the guy that made this bonsai as it is and put it in this pot, which is very good for the tree, he made a decision. This is my bonsai. It is this big and it is this tall. That is a given. Don't think you're going to change that with this particular tree. If you want this tree to have a four inch diameter trunk, then you either get it out of here and plant it back in the ground, or, or you, you forget about it because you can't do it. You know, if you, if all of us here, that if we had four lifetimes to give to this tree, in this pot, this is the, in this pot, we could not give this tree a four inch trunk. It just would not, it would never happen. You plant it in the ground, within 20 years, I mean 20 years is still a long time, but within 20 years you would have a 4 inch trunk, actually maybe less than that, maybe half that, 10 years, it would still take 10 years I think, you could have a 4 inch trunk. That isn't to say that you plant it in the ground and come back in 10 years time and it's grown into a lovely bonsai with a 4 inch trunk, oh no, no, <laughs> if you do that, you come back in 10 years time, you've got a 20 foot trunk maple and it doesn't look like a bonsai at all. Um, so the 10 years that it's in the ground, um, you've got loads to do to it and again sometime in the future we'll talk about field growing material in that way but not today um, so the point about where I started from here is that this tree is it's 26 inches tall whatever it is and it has an inch and a half two inch uh, down uh, to trunk uh, yeah down to not so um, what makes this tree look very much like a nice, mature, deciduous tree. Would anybody like to suggest what makes it look like that? I mean, it does look like that, I think you all agree. Uh, you know, what are the characteristics of this tree that make us think that it is a big, mature tree that could be 60, 80 foot tall Ramification on it. Ramification on it. Ramification. Exactly. Well, the Nabari, looks well, the Nabari a very, very important thing. Um, maybe we should start with the Nabari, but we, as you will come back to the Nabari in a minute. Um, the, the primary branch structure are these. Well, it, this is a nice, what's called a mother-daughter thing, where the, the little secondary trunk is like way, way smaller. So rather than a twin trunk, which it clearly is a twin trunk, it's got two trunks, it, because the twin, the second trunk is so small, it, we very commonly talk about this as a mother and daughter tree. Um, the, the the primary branches are, are there. They're not again. They're not going to change much. You need to be careful at the apex about the prim, the primary branches. But again, we, actually, that's something to talk about in the summer about structural pruning. Um, the secondary branches. <coughs> try to think about your tree in these terms. So, you've got your roots, we're going to come to the roots, that's the important part of today. You've got your trunk, it's got lovely taper, it's got inverse taper, no it hasn't got inverse taper now. You've got your roots, you've got your trunk, you've got primary branches. Think of it in terms of that, divide the tree up in your mind, roots, trunk, primary branches, secondary branches, another sec secondary branches, you could perhaps even have a third but we won't complicate it, then you have your twigs, as uh, <coughs> Philip rightly said, we call that ramification. So divide the idea of the tree into these sections, Bri uh, roots, trunk, primary, secondary, tertiary or ramification. It is nearly impossible to create a bonsai at doing all of those things at the same time. Which is what most of us try to do, to be perfectly honest. We don't, we're not happy just to spend the first five years doing the root system, which is actually what we should be doing. Um, we don't too many of us don't know about growing the trunk. They don't know that actually the only way to get that trunk four inches in diameter is to plant it to the ground. They think it's going to happen in a pot. And, and so it's not. 
it's not. And the reason, because the roots are so confined in the pond. We can do bits of everything. We pretty much can't do everything all at once, but we can do bits of it. I mean, for instance, um, at the same time as we're growing the trunk, we may have to grow the primary branches. Again, like, see, I've already just gone in, into the last thing I was going to deal with to, uh, this afternoon, but as soon as I've started, I'll carry on. Um, you remember I said earlier on, right at the beginning, I said people coming to me and complaining about chopped bonsai not being real bonsai. When the Japanese, and the Japanese take my word for it, they make the best bonsai. When they take a trident maple and they plant it in the ground along with 500 other trident maples to make bonsai, they know today they plant their cut cuttings or whatever. They know today amongst those 500 trident maples that a hundred of them are going to have a trunk as fat as my Thing, as a bonsai, when they sell it, when it's ready to be sold. And they know that, you know, a hundred of them is going to have a two-inch trunk, and so on and so forth. They decide that today. They don't decide it two years down the line, when it's been in the field that long. They decide today how long it's going to be, yeah, in the size. Um, they, don't, they don't know how long it's going to take, but they decide what they want it to be. Um, and actually, the tree in the ground, um, they work on the roots primarily at this stage, and they grow the trunk. It grows branches all over the place. Brian and I are talking about the trident maple here. Nothing else, or maybe a, an ace of palmatum, or maybe a Japanese white beech. In the field, it grows branches like that. And they don't mind that, because these huge branches with masses and masses of twigs are making this trunk fatter and fatter and fatter really quickly. And also they know that when this trunk is as big as they want it to be, they can cut every single one of these branches off and get rid of them. The trunk has reached that high and they've got a lovely taper. It's exactly what they want down here. All of these branches that grew in 10 years in the field cut them off, pot it up for the first time in an oversized pot, and wait till next spring. Next spring, millions of buds appear all over the place. And then they began to plan the second, or is it the third, part of making the bonsai. Then they begin to plan this primary branch structure. Because from here, they got 15 little buds shoot out. They only want one branch from there. So, you know, they maybe leave three, more or less exactly where they want the first branch to be. And when the, the one of these three, which is the most strong branch, is really getting going, then that one goes and that one goes, and they let that one grow. Um, and they do it all the way up the tree. And in the meanwhile, these great big calluses, where they cut the big branches off, they begin to work those, they begin to carve them away, so that the tree will callus over those completely, and may disappear completely if they do a really good job of that. Um, so, uh, th in a way this is exactly like the chopped Chinese elms that people seem to hate so much grown in a field till it's big, and then chop the bits off it don't want. Um, and then they take this, I mean, this again, this is not the time to take you through uh, how to make this branch into the primary branch on a tree with a two-inch trunk. At the moment, it's only three millimeters across. Um, I've got a good imagination. Uh, the reason I stress that this is what they do with a trident maple or a Japanese white beech or something is because you can't do this with any kind of coniferous bonsai. You grow your trunk of a pine tree in the field and come along and cut all the branches off and you've got one dead pine tree. You've got one dead juniper tree. It, it does not work like that 
with that with any of the coniferous species. That's why it's a little bit more complicated to make bonsai from pines and from junipers with a field growing thing because at the same time with them, at the same time you're growing this trunk, you must develop the right primary branch structure. You, only the pri primary branch structure needs to be done, only the primary branch structure. You don't need to do any of the secondary branch structure because you will never ever eliminate that branch. So you will always keep that. Which means so long as you keep some green on it, you can prune away this branch to your heart's content when you're trying to develop from first branches into second branches. Have I made that clear, do you think? Yeah. yeah. Nothing to do with roots. Yeah. <laughs> it is to do with the roots because <coughs> the ramification that Philip immediately said about this tree is, is you know what makes it look good. So the ramification is all these little tiny twigs. And as beautiful as this tree is, if it had twice as many little twigs like this, it would look even better. It kind of needs twice as many to be a really mature image. And it shouldn't, you know, I haven't pruned this away. I mean, it, it, don't look at this kind of thing. It should never be there. Well, for, for, for the moment, it, you should think that it should never be there. And there may be certain circumstances where it might be a good idea for that. that, that, that. Uh, so, um, you know, try to visualize this tree with twice as many little tiny twigs. Not twice as many primary branches. That's not... That's not good. Um, it's got as many primary branches as, as you want, for sure. Um, uh, and I'll mention this because we will certainly come back to this many, many times. Um, to make really good bonsai from deciduous trees like this and keep them good forever, or at least for your lifetime, you don't change the trunk. You don't change the primary <coughs> branch structure. You don't change the secondary branch structure, structure probably ever. You change the twigs for always. Like, um, you know, from today onwards, these twigs, it, let, let's put it another way. In 50 years' time, none of these twigs that are there today will be on this tree. But hopefully it'll have twice as many twigs as it's got today. But they will be different twigs. Does anybody um, disbelieve what I'm saying? And there's a very specific reason why you need to do that. Because, again, it's got nothing to do with roots. We talked about how uh, this tree is the right height for the right diameter and by and large it has the right volume of structure it has the right volume of twigs if you could imagine this tree with all this the same but the twigs out here it would look less uh, in proportion it would be not a harmonious image the Japanese nursery have created a good harmonious relationship between the volume of the twigs and this trunk. So what can you do? You can see how it's growing. It's going to do that. So what do you do? You, you take your scissors and you keep cutting back. Mm. And you keep cutting back to the silhouette. Do you know what then happens? You do that five years in a row, and you've kept the silhouette perfectly. But this twig here, in five years' time, it's not this beautiful, fine, one millimetre in diameter twig now. Five years down the road, because I've stopped it growing longer, I haven't stopped it getting fatter. And you, you can see that the, the twigs don't just grow long, they grow fatter. That's how this branch got to be as fat as it is. So in five years' time, and I've just kept pruning to the silhouette, 
every single one of what are now beautiful, fine twiglets. They're going to be as fat as this here. So the whole thing is going to look, I'm not saying it's going to look ugly, but it won't have this same beautifully graduated, you know, fat branch, slightly less fat branch, slightly, you know, a little bit thinner, and beautiful fine twigs. You can't do that. It is impossible to keep that like that by just simply, every year, cutting back to the silhouette. So what do you do? Well, at this time of the year, it's perfect. In fact, even slightly earlier than this, before the leaves begin, the buds begin to open up. <coughs> you go through this tree, starting at the bottom and working up. But we'll start here somewhere. Um, and you think to yourself, I don't want to destroy the image of this tree, so I don't cut off every single twig this year and start again from scratch, which you could do but you would not have such a beautiful image to look on, on your benches. What you can do is on this branch, you can say, right, what have we got? Bearing in mind that your brain is thinking, I hope, you know, fat branch, not such fat branch, even thinner branch, thinnest branch altogether. So what do I see here? Look at this. A really good example. Can you all see that? See how fat that branch is here, just here, compared with a really thin branch here. So, get the appropriate tool to do the job. Where was I? Here. So, that can come out. Uh, just cleaning up some stubs. Always do that if you happen to be there doing it. Uh, let's look at that. This. This is okay out here, but this is already getting quite fat here. And so I might possibly decide at this stage to cut that back. Um, so I work around this branch, and this is already quite long, so maybe I'll shorten that. Um, now, the two things happen now. This is already quite long, so I'll shorten that. Two things happen now. Because I've pruned it, I stimulate buds to open up. And we'll again, we'll go into that. We will cover that. Sure, we will cover that. We stick with the school, but we won't do it today. The pruning will stimulate birds, and as a consequence, I should get some new twigs open up here this year, and they'll be beautiful.